Yo, yo, peace, peace. What to do, peeps? Team K here. Sick as fuck. Caught a cold. Um, yeah, on Thursday I woke up with a cold man, and ever since then my my throat is scratching and shit, slimy and all of that stuff, man. I'm fucking, I fucking hate having a cold, man. And Merry Christmas, yo. I'm I was born Christian, but I don't celebrate Christmas, you know what I mean. But that doesn't mean that you cannot, you know. Um, more power to those who celebrate. So you know, what I mean? um, we are not here about talking about myself and, and Christmas and all that. It's about the music, you know what I mean. So we have your part ten of my hip hop rap CD collection. So. Let's get it started with today's album, Rakim, the 18th letter. Of course, the 18th letter in the alphabet is the R. The R for Rakim. Um, definitely his best solo album. You know what I'm saying? After, you know, him and Eric B um, went separate ways. You know, Rakim released this album two years after Eric B's uh, first and only solo album. This shit is really nice, man. The 18th letter is dope. It has a lot of great moments on here. Some incredible Primo and Pete Rock production. Even some Nick Wiz on here. Really dope. And this too is um, all of the greatest hits by Eric B and Rakim. Then we got The Master. Rakim's second album. Um, this was I, you know. Nothing too crazy or out of the ordinary. But it has some moments on here. Um, yeah, track number three, when I'll be on the mic, produced by Primo, dope as fuck. Then we got Rampage with Scout's Honor, By Way of Blood. Great album, really like this one a lot. This is one of Buster Rhymes' affiliates. And as a matter of fact, I actually used to have a clean version of the album, this is the explicit one, but I used to have a clean version of it. Which was fucking horrendous, bro. <laughs> it was like beeps like every every 30 seconds, 25, 30 seconds or so, man. It was really annoying. So I'm really happy to have the uh, the explicit version. Then we got rip, Rapper Big Poo with Sleepers. You know, Rapper Big Poo being part of Little Brother. Along with Fonte and Knife Wonder. This is dope as fuck. Really like rap and Big Poo a lot, man. Very underrated MC, if you ask me. Fucks with that heavy, man. That album. Then we got Razzcast with Solo Nice. Classic West Coast material right here. You know, this is still one of the most sought after rap albums. You know, for a while now. And yeah, this is just classic, man. Razzcast going in. Lyrically top notch. It's nothing but greatness right here, bro. I love that album. Then we got some Canadian hip hop, Cash Crop by Rascals. Pretty sure that most of you don't know about them. But these are some dope dudes, man. And this is a classic album as far as Canadian rap is concerned. Check out track number five, Clockwork. It's really dope. Then we got a compilation right here. <coughs> <clears throat> you got selling celery to get a salary. There's some, like I said, here remixes, demos, B sides by Raw Produce. Um, yeah, dope compilation. There's some nice '90s hip hop on here, man. Then we got Real Life with the Turnaround, along with Way the Drama. This is K Dev and the other MC. I don't know anymore. I forgot his name. Um, yeah, man, but this is, this is a dope album right here, man. One of the 90s underground gems, you know what I mean? Really dope stuff right here, man. Also, also I think, uh, reissued this, this year by 90s Tapes, if I remember correctly. You know, then we got, of course... New Jersey legend himself, man, Redman, with the album, his debut, super dope stuff, man, 
know what I'm saying? Especially at that time, it was heavily produced by Eric Sermon. You know what I mean? And Redman, of course, goes in on that shit. Every song on here is, is a banger. On my favorite Redman album, and I'm, I know it's not a lot of people's favorite. Um, other people's favorites is probably Muddy Waters, but this is my favorite right here. This is There is a Dark Side. The second album, also the one where <laughs> a red man was um, high out of his mind. But um, yeah, I really love this shit right here, man. Lots of insane bars on this one. I mean, red man was talking some crazy shit on here. I mean, look at his face, man. He already looks like he's in for some trouble, you know what I mean? This is dope as fuck, man. I really love that album right here. There is a dark side, it's dark, gritty, spacey, my kind of shit, man. We got Muddy Waters. A lot of people's favorite Redman album. I wouldn't put it past them, you know what I'm saying? This is a fantastic album right here. I actually think this is my second favorite. And then uh, what the album comes in third. This is incredible stuff, man. You know what I mean? Just Redman being Redman on top of. Amazing production on this shit. Then we got Docs the Name 2000. Uh, this is where kind of the downfall of Redman began. I mean, he had an amazing three album run with his first three records, but then Docs the Name was kind of um, put an end to it. You know what I'm saying? This album was pretty solid, but it was nothing that blew my mind or whatever. It was dope for what it was, but. Not more than that. Um, but it was still better than what followed after that. You know, the fucking Malpractice album was... I don't know what the fuck that was about. And then <laughs> and then after that, uh, Redman put out Red Going Wild. And that shit was, was hella trash, if you ask me. You know what I mean? Only to be followed by his worst album called Reggie. You know what I mean? It was Redman's career really... Went on a decline after Doc's The Name 2000, which is which is sad, you know what I'm saying? Because he's still one of the best MCs, but he just don't want to put out albums anymore. I think the last one he put out was in 20, 2012? 13 something? I mean, it's been a long time ago, you know what I mean? The, the Mudface album. Ah, oh, man. Come on, Redman. Give us another album. Fully produced by Eric Sermon or whoever does 90s production, man. Because that's when Redman sounds the best. Because as of late, he's been putting out some music videos, rapping over classic 90s beats. And those get the best out of him. So we need to uh, get another one. You know, one of those 90s boom bad bass producers to supply beats to Redman again. Because we need that Redman back in the game, you know what I mean? But that's besides the point. Uh, moving on, we got The Roots. I actually got, I think, all of The Roots albums in here. On CD at the very least. So we got Organics right here. It's their debut album. Yeah, this is really dope. But it's more jazz for it, you know what I mean? Um, but it's, it's a great album. I really like it a lot, man. And we got Do You Want More? <coughs> um... Just my second favorite album of theirs. Once again, very heavy on the instrumentation. Black Thought, incredible. You know what I mean? I love this album a lot, bro. But my favorite one is Illadelph Half Life. You know, this album is when the roots, you know, shifted a little bit away from the live instrumentation, but it was still incredible as hell, man. You know? I mean, that's why it also became my favorite album of theirs. It's nothing but amazingness on here. Then we got Things Fall Apart. Their fourth album. Widely considered their best album um, in general. You know, if you ask the general public, they would probably say that this is their favorite one. And I wouldn't disagree. You know what I mean? If someone told me, you know, Things Fall Apart is their best album. I'll say absolutely, you know, that's a great fucking album right here. Really, really dope. And then three years after that, they released Phrenology. 
also great stuff man really really dope stuff and that's the cool thing about the roots man like they never put out a whack album in <laughs> throughout the whole career man every album was at the very least good you know what i mean so we got the tipping point came out two years after phrenology and this is also a great album especially i, I love that song boom man just listen to that shit bro listen to that shit the way black thought was rhyming on there and the man the voices that he did you know where he uh did a rapping impression of Kooji rap and big daddy kane out of this world bro i don't know how he did it but he mastered those voices man the cadences the rhyme styles everything man it was insane should check that song out boom by the roots and be in for your for a surprise man actually also check out the roots uh, in your dreams kid where he makes an impression of other rappers too like guru p rock odb this dude is next level bro black thought bro <laughs> insane fucking mc dog i'm telling you then we got game theory by the roots another great one you know all of their material was solid bro all of their material then we got rising down also fantastic i always love the cover art of theirs man they always have great covers how i got over and i think that was also the first time where we heard black thought singing if i'm not mistaken and he actually can sing really well too bro like black thought like joe budden says bro black thought is an alien mc man this dude can do every fucking thing bro god damn why how can a person be so talented bro <laughs> man shout out to black thought yo undone which is an incredible album really amazing this is um concept record where the whole story plays in reverse just insane bro you know just insane bro and then the latest roots album and then you shoot your cousin um which this album received some criticism because there was a big lack of black thought on here man but still i think this album is great you know just from an artistical standpoint and you still get enough rapping on here man you know what i mean i really really like this album a lot um don't really get a lot of the criticism this album gets you know what i mean but that's just me man then we got royal flush with ghetto millionaire man prayers up for royal flush bro this dude was diagnosed with cancer not too long ago you know he's fighting cancer right now bro so yeah man hope he pulls through man because we cannot lose another legend oh and ghetto millionaire that album of his classic classic queen stuff you know what i mean then we got Safir with boxcar sessions Safir being a west coast mc highly underrated man like nobody really talks about him fun fact this dude, Safir, he played Cousin Harold in Menace to Society, you know what I'm saying? Who know? I found out, you know, way after the fact, you know what I mean? Years ago, but it was so long after I've seen Menace to Society. And yeah, this album, banger. You know what I'm saying? Especially because this does not sound anything like a West Coast record, man. This is just East Coast, boom bap, jazzy fucking dope it was produced by some guy named jay-z <laughs> who's not the actual jay-z that we all know today you know what i mean <clears throat> we got scarface of the ghetto boys uh scarface legendary mc recently had a tiny disc concert man which was dope as fuck really enjoyed that man it was probably the best one i've seen so far man because scarface put a lot of emotion in it i love it and yeah, man, Mr. Scarface is back. It's hella dope, man. I'm saying some good southern early 90s hip hop. And we got The World Is Yours, you know, playing with the theme of Scarface. Of course, you have to use the tagline The World Is Yours, man. 
another great album. Then we got Scarface with The Diary. Undeniably his best album, you know what I'm saying? I don't think there's anyone that would disagree with that, man. The Diary is the absolute shit, bro. This is the bomb record right here. Um, one of the best albums come out of the self. Absolutely incredible with songs like The Sheet and Hand of the Dead Body. featuring Ice Cube and... 94 revision of mind playing tricks on me insane bro then we got scarface the untouchable uh 1997 is the year on this got the legendary song smile with tupac on it great bracket man really love it then we're gonna move on to some sean p this is his box set called gorilla this was actually also released on, I think, vinyl, but not on tape. Yeah, I think this was released on CD and vinyl, but not on tape. And this is a really dope box set. I actually ordered it way back when it was like 16 bucks or whatever. It was stupid cheap when I first bought it. Yeah, but obviously since then, the, uh, the price got up. You know what I mean? So it comes with... The three albums that were released at that time. The three official studio albums that were released at the time by Sean Price, which are Monkey Bars, Jesus Price Superstar, and for the first time ever, Mike Tyson um, released in a in a jewel case, you know what I'm saying? Because the standard release, the first release on CD was in in a digipack, not in a jewel case, so that was dope that finally we got a jewel, pa uh, jewel case packaging on that album. And we got Songs in the Key of Price by Sean Price. This was obviously released after his death. If you take a look at the track list, 30 tracks on this one. This is just um, a compilation of songs, you know, short songs that... Or verses that Sean Price recorded over the years. And this is really dope, man. It's actually treated like a mixtape, you know. It's mixed by P.F. Cutting. Um, which is really dope. I like this a lot. This one has um, one song on here that I fucking love. It's track number 17, Planet Apes. That beat. That beat is off the hook. also love the song So Perfect. You know what I'm saying? Which I thought the... I think it was the, the music video for it, you know, that was kind of cute where uh, Sean Price's daughter, who's also called Sean Price, you know, young as hell, rapped the, uh, rapped Sean Price's verse, you know, or Sean P's verse. It was really cute, man. You know what I mean? I thought that was a nice touch. Um, then we got Runaway Slave by Showbiz and AG. Classic DITC stuff from the early 90s. Yeah, this one has some great material on here. It's actually a Japanese pressing. That's why the back cover looks so weird. As you can see here, Japanese lettering. Yeah, incredible record, man. Really dope. Has the song Represent with one of Big Al's first appearances on Wax. Um, dope as fuck, man. Really love it. And then we got Goodfellas, which is also... One of the more sought after records of the 90s. You know, once again, this is Japanese press. Um, love it. You know what I'm saying? Another great underrated classic from the 90s. Or mid 90s, I should say. Then we got a record that nobody knows, which is um, recorded, I think, by some dudes from the South. Or I think some members from the group are from Atlanta. Sleeve Stacks with Behind the Iron Curtain. No one knows about this album right here. Absolutely no one. Only those who are like really into collecting, you know. They are probably aware of this record. And um, yeah, this shit is dope. Check out the track Raw Raps. That's the one that I remember from this album. Alright, then we got Slick Rick. Arguably the greatest storyteller in rap. Definitely the most influential one, you know what I mean? Because 
Nobody was rapping like him. Nobody had style like him. Like, bro, look at this dude, man. He was young as hell. He was wearing suits and Kango hats and, you know, like, <laughs> like you see in the, the next CD, man. These heavy ass gold chains, bro. Like, no, who was wearing stuff like this, man? And then, of course, the eye patch, which was, which was a style selection, not by choice, you know what I'm saying? He got shot in the eye, I think, or he was blinded or whatever. Um, yeah, man, but this dude had a lot of style and a lot of swagger, man. Really loves Slick Rick, bro. This dude is um, a unique entity in hip hop, you know what I mean? And it's fucking dope, man. I love love his music. Um, yeah. Then we got behind bars right here. Uh, I think I think he actually recorded this while he was in prison, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong about that. I don't always keep my facts straight. Who cares, bro? I'm <laughs> some little YouTuber. Who gives a fuck, bro? Behind bars. Great album, though, man. Really love it. This one has some great tr tracks on here, man. And then we got The Art of Storytelling by Slick Rick, which obviously the title was taken from the, the Outcast song, the Art of, or the Outcast songs, The Art of Storytelling, because there were two tracks on it, a Quemini album. And yeah, man, this is a decent album. I, I don't think it was great. Um, I like it. Well, it's not the I think it's the the weakest out of all of these Slick Rick album, but even though it's the weakest, it's still a pretty solid album if you ask me. Then we got Fantastic Volume One by Slum Village. This is a reissue right here. I think this came out in '05. Um, yeah, it's the original Fantastic, dope shit. Um, but I also got an issue of this album that was released a few years prior. Fantastic Volume 1, once again. You know, this is dope as a motherfucker, bro. Love the JD production on here. This was when J Dilla was still JD, you know what I'm saying? Oh man, then we got Fantastic Volume 2. This is my shit right here, bro. I love that fucking album. This was, you know, obviously not as dirty sounding as the first one. The first one had more of a fine, you know what I mean? Amazing fucking album. Love all the songs on here. Dope as fuck. Then we got Smith & Wesson, The Shining. Great fucking album. Love it. It's part of the bootcamp click right here. Amazing record. Then we got Smooth The Hustler with Once Upon a Time in America. Another one of those underrated 90s gems that nobody talks about, but you definitely should. Some dope fucking stuff. And then we got, for last, Doggy Style by Snoop Dogg. Which for a long time, this copy I had was pretty special because it had the song Cheese Up, Hose Down on it. But this year, the album was reissued with that song on it, so my copy is not anything special anymore, you know what I mean? But I'm um, still dope to have. Because I, I don't have to rebuy it, you know what I mean? But yeah, that was it. Part 10 of my Hip Hop CD collection. Let me know what you think in the comments. You know, if you want to subscribe or like, I don't care, man. As long as you guys have fun. As long as you guys have fun watching my videos, you know. That's all that matters. So, till next time. Keep it cool, guys. See ya.